Hello, statistics students. In this video, I'm going to show you um, the data collection part of the STAT project. I will um, give you details on what is required on your data collection plan and also will show you how to uh, make an online survey. So first, if you look at the project requirement, um, the data collection plan is described here. The first thing you need to do is determine two populations of interest, population one and two, because the scope of this project is to test your understanding of how to compare two population proportion and also two population means. So you, the first things you need to do is to decide your two populations. Um, in my example, I'm going to do a sample project here. I will decide um, the first population as adults, not in college or not in school. Population two is college students. You can do population one is male, female for population two. You can do population one is high school students and population two as college students, or even uh, population one is DVC or, or lonely students and population two would be other community college students. So it's really up to you. Um, for college students, you can actually just say, oh, I just want to do um, the Lonely College or DVC students. Um, the second thing is the major things that you need to, to decide is you are to collect three data items from each of the samples of the two populations. Um, one, categorical data, and two, quantitative data. Um, quanti quanti uh, categorical data would be a, a, uh, a data where the data value is not a numbers. It would be like yes or no or some kind of category. Uh, in my case, I'm going to study or this project is about uh, coronavirus uh, effect on students and non-students. So I'll ask uh, questions about how they are affected by the shelter in place policy or stay home policy. The two quantitative uh, data would be what is the longest duration that you have stay home, and also in how many months do you think the shelter in place will be lifted completely in California? So the second and the third data are numerical value answers, so they are called quantitative data. The first question about how they are affected will be uh, categorical data. So you will decide it one categorical and two data two quantitative data that you will be collecting from your two population. And then the third part is to make a claim about one of the quantitative data. Um, lastly, you formulate a plan to how to collect your data, most likely uh, doing an online survey. So after you think about this, discuss with your group member, you're ready to write down your plan. So in, the, in this uh, data collection plan, you have to write down your group member's name, most, at most four, pe four people in a group. You describe your two populations. So in my case, I would collect data from non-college students as well as college students. And for each one of these populations, I'll collect samples. For each sample or for each subject in the sample, I'll ask these three questions. The first categorical data is how are you affected by the pandemic? Strongly, somewhat, and not much. You see the answer are one of the three category. And then the first quantitative data is what is the longest duration you stay at home? That is a number, so it's quantitative. The second quantitative is in how many months do you think shelter in place will be lifted in California? That is also a number, so it's a quantitative data. And then I decided to make a claim that uh, college students stay longer at home than uh, working adults, not in college. So you can make whatever claim that you want. Um, you can make a claim on the first quantitative, quantitative data or the second one. But you have to have two. Why? Because we, we, we will need to do um, correlation analysis. Then the last thing you want to do after you decide all these three data, three types of data and two population is you are to plan how you're going to collect the data. In my case, I will make my surveys, do two surveys uh, through Google Forms and send it out via email, Facebook requests, or friends. Um, you can send it to classmates in school, relatives, family members, 
They are not a very random sample, but due to the restriction of the stay home policy, um, that's the best we can do. So uh, in this particular case, it's okay. And you should also plan to get at least 30 plus subjects. And if 30 plus is difficult for you, at least over 20, okay? Because T tests for quantitative data require around 20 subjects or 20 data points to be um, meet the requirement for normal distribution. And uh, it is 30 subjects in each population. So the sample size should be around 30. And make sure the number of responses for each category for the categorical question to be at least five. That would make sure that p hat is normal. Okay, so take a note of this requirement. After you set this up, submit to um, submit to me, and then I'll approve your data collection plan, and then you can go ahead and set up your online survey. So I'm going to do an example in here on how to do an online survey through Google Forms. I know that SurveyMonkey has a way where you can do online survey as well as um, Facebook. I think you can do online poll. Um, even uh, Instagram can do online polls too. But Google Form has the benefit where once you have the survey filled out, the file is just, the data files is already you know ready. So to get to Google Form, you just search Google Form, log on with your um, uh, Gmail account or Google account, and then you would be presented in this. Um, so this is Google Form. You can say you start a new form. The, um, so you would need to do two surveys, one for each population. So in my case, it would be a stat survey for a non-college student, non-college uh, adults, or working adults, not in college. I was just say adults, <laughs> not in college. Um, so once you click this, this would be the same. And then the first question would just be whatever that you have decided for your first question. So I'm just going to copy. How are you affected by the pandemic? Okay, just copy it over. And then um, that's the, the first question. And then you just put your question over here, paste. Option one is strongly affected. And then you say add option um, somewhat. The last one is um, not much, right? Not much affected. And these are multiple choice questions as documented here. And then you're done with the first one. Then you're going to do the second question, which is the second data, the quantitative data. So again, you go to your uh, data collection plan. What is your longest duration that you stay home? And you come back here and you put the question here. Now, this is not a multiple choice question because you expect people to give you a number. So it'll be short answer and you want them to answer in a number. So you click over here and you say response validation has to be a number, right? So tell them it is a number greater than or equal to zero, right? So, and then you're done, right? What is the longest time you stay at home? Do question mark. Then the third question is the second quantitative data, which is in how many months do you think you'll be staying home? Copy. Um, so that would be, um, is it the second question? Third question, right? Um, right, so question option. What is this one? I don't know what this one is. I think I'm going to remove this one. Hmm. Hmm. This one I'm going to remove this one. Oh, delete here. Okay, so in how many months? So this is the third one. 
Do you think shelter in place will be lifted in California? You also want them to give you a short answer in numbers. And here, this is response validation. So that's uh, I want response validation. A number is greater than equal to zero. So when they enter it, and you also want them to require. So you don't want them to just do your survey and skip all those questions. So this is a short answer one. Also, also required. The first one, we also want them to be required. And you're done. Okay, first multiple choice, categorical. The second is, um, how long have you been, have they been staying? And also, how long do you think that these things will be over completely? Maybe it will, it will be lifted completely. California. So once you're done, then you can um, sense. You hit the sense, you can get the link. Make it a shorter one, and that's you would copy this link and um, send it to your friend. Okay, you can actually send it through email here directly, but it's good to just you know copy and paste this and uh, send it to your friend. So usually I would put it here to make sure that it works. Oh, okay. Before I do that, I think there's one thing that I want to do. Uh, in the um, before I send it out, I want to do settings. And in the presentation, I don't want them to send another response. Once they are submit, once once they submit it, they should just send it. Um, under setting, you can also limit them to one response, but it requires Google account sign in. I don't really need to. But so that is ready, and I hit send, get the link. The hitting send is actually just to get the link. So you copy this and you try it out yourself. Okay. Usually you try it out. After you try it out, you can, you know, delete your response. So maybe I'll try it out so I can, you know, at least show you how it would show up. Uh, seven, and then I submit. So, oh, here. Oh, I, I know what happened. I There is still a submit another response. So I should actually, when I do the settings, I should say presentation, don't show this, and save. I forgot to save, and that's it, right? So I send another one, um, I get the link, shorten it, get the link, copy it, and I try it out myself, paste, somewhat, three day, four months. Okay, so just trying out. So you would have some response being um, sent, right? So you can look at your response. Now I tried two, two times, so you can see there's two response here. And when you're done, you can actually click here and download your response in a data files. So later on, I'll show you how you can download this and, and upload it to um, Excel or StatCrunch or Google Sheets to process it, but that would be another video. So once you have this, okay, so we don't want to look at this. We look at the question again. So this is for one populations. So um, I want to duplicate it so I can have it ready for another. Uh, um, so what you can do is you make a copy. Okay, so you would be uh, setting another form, and this form is, that survey for college student. Remember, you have two population. If you use the same form, okay, so okay. See, you would have two survey, and then what you can do is you can do send, and you will have another another one. You can test it out. For college students, well, I'm not, but I'm just testing it out, right? Six, uh, one, okay, submit. And see, when you go back to your um, um, form, where it is for college students, you can see one response already. So that's how you uh, set up your survey and send to your friends to collect data.